Hello everyone, today I will be doing a tutorial on how to randomize samples in Full Studio. I received a request on how to do this after someone saw a video of it being done in Ableton Live and wanted a way to do it in FL Studio. So um, it's quick it's it's good if you want like a quick glitchy flavor added to whatever you're working on. Um, so here's an example. So it's just where, in this case, I'm randomizing drums, but you know, you can use it on synth samples, loops, whatever you want. So, yeah. Uh, there are two methods of doing this. The first method, which is the one I've got open, it uses performance mode, the new performance mode you can find in FL Studio 11. And it's the advantages are it's simple to set up. And it has an you know an easy layout. It's easy to view, easy to access. Um, yeah. And the second method uses uh, SliceX inside Patcher with a VFX key mapper, which comes with the new Patcher in FL Studio 11. So yeah, this is the new FL 11 Patcher, by the way. So yeah. So it's just the same thing, pretty much. Um, okay, now I'll show you how to do it. So the first method, I will. Uh, the first method I'll show you, the performance mode method. I'm just going to be using um, some drum samples that cut, that come with the new FL11. So everyone should have these. Yeah. So I'll just choose some samples Got some, got some good samples there, and then all you want to do is, it's just in pattern one. You can use whatever pattern; doesn't really matter. But you just want to put one note in each channel, and then left click here and choose split by channel. This puts each um, instrument, each channel, into a separate pattern. Now you just want to go into the playlist left click the playlist options and choose performance mode you can also access this by pressing control P um, now I'll just press alt T which brings up the marker name and I'll just choose I'll just choose start and bring it along to wherever I want song start and then right click it and choose song start this starts the bars counting in from that marker and leaves all this place empty to place patterns so I'm just gonna place in all my old patterns that I created before. Um, yep, and you see how they're like grayed out? That means they're muted. So you want to double right click and then just unmute them. So double right click what I've got now, it brings up the mute tool and then just drag over them and see they're brighter now and so they're unmuted so now um, oh yeah, yeah just click on just right click on the track that has them all you have to make sure you've got them all in the same track and then just choose performance settings random and now when I press play they'll be randomized Alright, so yeah, that's control left click, drag over them. I can make them shorter, can make them whatever size I want, so this will randomize them quicker. Yep, yeah. so that's the first method. Yeah, that's it for the first method with performance mode. 
like I said before, it's got an easy layout, simple to use. Yeah, now I'll demonstrate the second method. So I'll just open a new file and I'll insert a patcher. And then I'll add a slice X to the patcher. And now I'll press Control F8, which brings up the plugin picker. And make sure you're in the All tab and choose the VFX key mapper, which for me, I don't know if it'll be the same for everyone, but for me it's in this bottom right corner. And just left click and drag it onto the connection between From FL Studio and Slice X. And by dragging it onto the connection, it'll insert itself in the patcher chain. Now I just want to open up SliceX, so you just double click it in there and insert my samples. So what I'm going to do is when I'm inserting samples, you hold down shift before you left click it. And then by holding down shift, what that will do is automatically add a region marker inside SliceX and it will auto it'll automatically add the samples one after another as well. So, so see there's the region already being added. And still holding down shift, adds another region and adds it after the first one. Um, now that all my samples are in there, I just want to choose the region options here. Little marker with the ABC next to it. And choose assign trigger notes to all. What this does, it plays each sample in succession. So it plays the first sample, then I choose the note I want to assign it to. So I'll choose C5. Then it plays the next um, sample, choose an, and I'll choose the next note. So you want to make sure that you're doing them all in the same octave range, so like you're doing them all in the C0, or you're doing all of them in the C4. Um, if you've got so many samples that you go past the B4, then just go into just go into C5, just go into the next octave up. Um, but yeah, just place them one after another, it's just easier. Um, so C5 for that sample, next one C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. Oh, there's one more, isn't there? Yes, there is. Okay, uh, since I missed this one, I'll just right click it, trigger note, and F. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and F, which are just the notes of the piano. Um, now, I open up VFX Key Mapper down here. And since I'm using the notes C to F, you just want to make a square from C to F, just covering this area here. So I have to left click each one individually since oops, since you can't just left click and drag over it. Wish you could, but yeah. So I'm just filling in this square here from the C note to the F note. If you're using C to B or C to A sharp or whatever, then you'll fill a square like that. Um, yep. Now you want to leave base key, leave offset, leave pitch slide, and for multi mode just choose random. Now what this will do is every note that's mapped to C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and F will be randomized. So that's what the key mapper does in this. So SliceX has automatically dumped these notes to the piano roll. So I'll just delete them and insert my own. You can do them on whatever you, whatever note you want, as long as it's from C to F. Um, but I'll I'll just place them all in C. But yeah, you can use whatever. It doesn't matter.
Okay, so now when I press play, uh, yep, they should randomize. Yep, so that's working correctly. And you can, you know, change the note length, whatever you want. So, like, if I select them all, hold down Alt, and choose this little knob thing here, and just drag left, it'll snap to the grid, and just make them shorter. Again, if I want to make them longer, just drag them up to here. So, yeah. Um... Good, the good thing about the piano roll is you can, you know, quickly add swing by choosing snap uh, none and, you know, shifting the notes along a little. Um, adding swing, you can, you know, legato, quantization, whatever you want. Um, so. Now that that's done, I'll just demonstrate how to do pitch randomization in the same thing. So uh, make sure patch is selected inside the step sequencer. Just click the mix track you want to link it to and press Control L. So there's Control L gets automatically renamed and recolored. And inside that mixer track I'll just choose a fruity peak controller. Now the first thing you want to do fruity peak controller for some reason it defaults with it muted, so make sure you unclick this. So now it's unmuted. Right. Um, so I want to base, set the base on zero, set the volume on full, leave the tension as a flat line, put the speed around nine o'clock, ten o'clock position, um, phase on zero, and make sure for the LFO shape you choose this last shape, the one that looks like the white noise oscillator inside 3x oscillator. Now I reopen Patcher and open SliceX. Right click the SliceX master pitch. This is how you'll randomize the pitch. If you want to randomize volume, say for example, you can right click the master volume and do the same thing. But I'm going to do this for pitch, so right click activate. Inside Patcher, every knob, every slider, every control is not activated by default. Um, so, yeah, anything you want to activate, you have to right click and activate. So I'm just going to right click it, choose activate, then right click again and choose link to controller. In, under the internal controller section, I'll choose peak controller LFO. If you haven't got a peak controller anywhere in the project, then there will be no option here. It'll just it'll just have none up here and then there'll be nothing listed. So make sure you've got the peak controller done first. And I'm just going to choose LFO since we're using the LFO section of the peak section. And then just click accept. And as you can see, the master pitch there is already being randomized by the peak controller. I can make that randomize faster by putting the speed down, randomizing quicker and put the speed up to make it randomized slower. Yeah, but I like to keep it around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock since it, it just works the best for like drum samples. Well, for, from what I've found anyway. So if I just press play again, um, the VFX key mapper will randomize the, uh, the samples while the peak controller randomizes the pitch. So. And yep, that's working correctly. So, oh yeah, just one final thing. If you don't want to randomize pitch anymore, all you have to do is just turn off Fruity Peak Controller and then make sure you middle click this slider. So middle click just resets it. So now it'll just be reset. And if you want to turn it back on, you just uh, re-enable Peak Controller and I'll start randomizing again. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's it for this tutorial. So, 
if you have any questions, anything you want to know, or any tutorial requests or anything, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. So thanks for, thanks for watching guys and I hope this was useful. See you next time.